हेलो एवरी वन गुड इवनिंग वेलकम टू अवर यूट्यूब चैनल हियर विथ मी वी हैव अ वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट ग्रैंड मास्टर आकाश जी एंड माई फ्रेंड इज ऑल्सो देयर गुड टू हैव यू आकाश हेयर हाई गाइज yeah yeah akash there it will be a little bit delay on the stream so don't worry about it you just uh, okay, okay. yeah yeah so yeah, i just uh, pushed off the uh, voice yeah. okay yeah. hi guys hi atul <laughs> hi nandini yeah thanks for having me here yeah we are actually very happy to have you here and we are going to have uh, lots of fun today means we will talk about your games we'll talk about many things but before we go further i would like to tell the viewers that uh, we have a national champion with us uh, akash he is also india's 66th uh, grandmaster and uh, he has many other tournament victories also just before uh, like uh, this stream i was talking with him he has won in prague open tournament and uh, he is yet to play the challenges uh, maybe when <laughs> he will get the time he'll play it <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a nice way to put it <laughs> yeah so we have some uh, people over here guys please do send us hi hello something like that so that uh, we will come to know like everything is good and uh, we have one friend also he is saying hello people yes hello butterscotch is here and then he said why the hi hello good good hi 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 yeah so akash uh, i have uh, certain questions by the way nandini uh, uh, you are also here thanks for being here <laughs> you are going to be my co host <laughs> <laughs> so i have uh, so akash like uh, one question which we like uh, would like to know about you like how did you start your chess journey like uh, we know like uh, you are an engineer also uh, you are a grandmaster also but before that maybe like uh, you had some uh, normal like upbringing like you started very early or you started a little bit late we have some questions how do you manage your studies and chess everything so please let us know sure so like everyone i was also put into the normal uh, school uh, behavior so i was also going to school every day <laughs> attending classes and uh, chess was uh, how it got introduced to me was from my father oh so he uh, he was a person who plays chess in our family and i i didn't learn chess like i was like just seeing him watching him play chess with his friends and other kids so that got me curious and i just learned the basics okay then what happened and i was in the age of uh, like i don't remember like around 7 i think so then we had some uh, summer camp in our chess in our school oh. uh, so we they conducted the chess summer camp so i participated in it and i was doing well mm -hmm. but relatively it was late actually i was i started chess at the age of like 7 and a half and then not, when i came not that late i will say i started <laughs> more late than you <laughs> oh yeah even i was late but also. okay <laughs> it, it it tells like i am not a grandmaster mm -hmm. right that's also not that <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so uh, around 7 and a half you started Okay. Yeah, the games uh, where I just learned the basics. Mm -hmm. But for the one next one year, I was just going for the summer camp only. Like summer camp, it goes on like for two months, two and months. then they will yeah two months summer camp, and then they will have some few classes in weekends. I was just attending that, and after one year, like my coach said, like he he what he did was like he he was teaching the same lessons again. Oh. like i went to my mother and said like this coach is teaching the same uh, lessons which i learned the previous <laughs> then my mother went to the coach and asked why why are you teaching the same will there be any changes in the course mm -hmm. and he then advised uh, us to like go to the academies and uh, then learn chess and there so that's how the beginning stage started okay cool yeah. and it's um... not it's not common for you know a grandmaster to big to begin his chess career with a summer camp <laughs> it's not at all common yeah but it started and uh, just to let you as you said like you started coaching and so who was your first coach so my first coach is anand oh you know <laughs> no his name is anand okay so <laughs> <laughs> 
I thought yeah, Vishyan. You are talking about Vishyan, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, so his name is also Anand, and he was the first person to take classes in summer camp. No. Okay. But like, if you want to say actually, like, it has to be my father since because he taught me the basics. Okay. Good. Is your father? like uh, father like coach i as far as i know like uh, there are many chess fathers who have taught uh, the best example yeah. is koniru hampi her father is the one who brought up uh, everything in her language she is the pride of our india so father plays a big role in everybody yeah everybody. actually like uh, we were keeping uh, some survey mm-hmm. like uh, in 2019 like like around 500 people participated like we were asking what are like if you are introduced to a sport mm-hmm. who is the first person teaching you that mm-hmm. so it's mostly the parents and it's mostly the father okay. nice and uh, just to let you know we have some viewers here from uh, maybe from uh, cmj team they are saying and uh, okay great okay there are other friends also harish ji is there karthik is there and ame is there okay we have uh, our regulars also aryan raikar so good to have you guys here like uh, it's always pleasure to have uh, chat active here and we are going to learn some uh, interesting things uh, about learning uh, well i would like to say this thing like uh, akash has his own online chess academy also uh, it is named as uh, named as chess grad we will be talking about that uh, in more detail maybe after some time uh, first uh, akash what would you like to do so would you like to go straight to the chess and uh, and then discuss about other things yeah definitely so we can keep the viewers also yeah entertained with chess <laughs> yeah and in between we will be talking about your chess career also how uh, you became a grandmaster like when did you get all the norms and everything but that we will uh, talk uh, during the game is that fine yeah sure okay so uh, just wanted to check uh, have you sent me the complete analysis also yeah yeah i've sent you in the whatsapp yeah yeah just one minute guys okay we are going to get uh, the chess game and uh, we learn from the fide trainer also akash is also not only a grandmaster he is also a fide trainer so it's something interesting we are going to learn many things today okay here we go oh, i'll get the chess board okay for this i'll keep it for after some time and first we'll have the chess board and then we'll talk about this okay akash uh, this is the first game uh, like we have this game and uh, we can see like this game we are going to uh, see and uh, sandeepan chanda is your opponent can you please tell me a little bit briefly about this game yeah this game uh-huh. there's a very uh, very good back story to this game uh-huh. so consider first of all let's talk about this tournament this was national okay. senior mm-hmm. 2019 Happened in Sikkim. I don't know, guy, if you guys participated in this. Nandini was I there, guess. and uh, one more yeah. thing Nandini. I would like to tell: like you played against Anurag, I think, if I'm not wrong, in that tournament. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I played against Anurag. Yeah, that's why I asked. Like, if you guys both were there. No, I was not I there. Know. I was not there, but uh, Anurag and Nandini were there. That's uh, something I know because we discussed about it. Uh, My brother was also there. <laughs> Yeah, Neeraj was the yeah, yeah. I remember. Okay, great. So before this tournament, this 2019 year, I had a very like a very tough year mm-hmm. with regards to chess. I had like a lot of ups and downs, and the rating was going like nowhere. Like it was just revolving around the same uh, points, mm-hmm. around two, four, seven, five, and and I had two grandmaster names like. before when i won the national senior championship in 2012 i got my first mm-hmm. and second norm in a uh, round robin event i got it so it was the same 2019 but i was not like i was fully into chess at that point okay. i was not doing anything else and fully focused on that but so i also participated in uh, asian championship which happened in china the same year mm-hmm. i was very close to getting a norm but i missed it out okay so it was a very uh, hard 
point at that point for me. I didn't. I had nothing to lose. Kind of thing was my approach in this tournament. So yeah, that's how it went. And the starting of this tournament, I had like a very successful start. Okay. I scored uh, first five out of five. Five out of five. Wow. Yeah, five out of five. I was leading like a fifth round. I beat Aravind, mm -hmm. and I was leading with half a point. And next round, I was paired with uh, Abhijit, mm -hmm. Abhijit Gupta, and the game ended in draw. And this was the seventh round. I had to play against Sandeepan. Okay. So this is the start. This is the like uh, intro for the tournament. Mm -hmm. And with preparation, so I was when I saw the pairing, I know Sandeepan. He's a very strong player. Of course. Like, and he has a very systematic approach to everything. So when I checked his opening, it was very evident that he's going to play knight of four for e four. <laughs> okay, I will just start the with the game e four c five knight of three d six d four c d four knight d four knight of six knight c three and a six. So you were uh, already expecting that he will play knight of opening. Yeah. True. Okay. I had a lot of options for here. Like I used to play h3 here. Mm -hmm. I used to play uh, earlier days. I used to play bishop g5, okay. the main line, mm -hmm. and uh, also the side line with bishop e2. Ah, bishop e2. Bishop e2. It's a safe line, and also a4. Ah. So nowadays you may also know like there are plenty of moves which can be played in. Yeah, yeah. Even rook yeah. g1 is rook possible. Rook g1. Uh, Arvind, <laughs> Arvind, I think was the first one which I remember. Like he played. I with uh, some strong player. <laughs> Arvind, what Arvind played was knight of three, first move knight of three, knight yeah. of six, second uh -huh. move rook g1 he played. <laughs> yeah. And I think the g4 ideas, these kind of ideas Fisher used to play, right, earlier? g4 ideas? Yeah, in yeah. Sicilian? I, I'm just saying in general, the ah, g4 okay. ideas, okay, okay. you know, any, yeah. any opening, I've seen uh, Fisher play earlier in some games. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I use... Uh, yeah, he is known for his creative. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, again, uh, so when I was seeing, like, I was very much confused which variation to go with. Since we know which is the, like, Knight of is the mostly the one we are going to face it. And yeah. I was pretty confused what to play. Still, the next, it, the tournament, I mean, the round happens in the morning. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, you have a lot of time to prepare, but I couldn't figure out what to play itself in the previous night. Like it took me like three to four hours, and then I decided let's play bishop e3. Oh, bishop e3. I have studied this line like in the previous few tournaments. I just tried one or two games. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try this, and I went. And here the e5 is the main line basically. E5, yeah, yeah. E5, yeah, is, E5 the, is the E5 and then uh, knight of three, knight b3. These are the two main lines. Because I have played yeah. Nadorf uh, throughout my life, you can say, from black mm -hmm. side. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's always okay. a pleasure to play this uh, opening. Okay, but guys, uh, ju just uh, just one yeah. minute, like guys, whoever is in the chat, they are messaging and everything. Please. Uh, like the stream because if you like the stream we will reach more people and more people will be benefited and uh, it is like uh, a master class by our special guest grandmaster is here so let's make it a uh, little bit big so keep liking the stream guys and uh, enjoy and if you have any questions related to the game uh, feel free to ask us and uh, akash will definitely try to answer your questions I mean, yeah sure whatever yeah. question not yeah. only to me you can also ask to Atul and Nandini <laughs> yeah yeah sure they but... will also be answering you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so okay so e3 was uh, you were expecting e3 uh, e5 e5 right? sorry uh, e5 sorry e5 yeah he had played uh, both e5 and e6 mm -hmm. so I had to prepare for both and e5 was like pretty confident at I was uh, with my preparation but e6 mm -hmm. this is quite tricky because it is again transposing into a scavenging type of position correct correct which is completely a uh, different charts like you have to know other lines as well when you're going to the bishop e3 line mm -hmm. so here is where I was not sure what to go with and in the like the round starts at 9 a.m. I believe, and uh, it's, I woke up at some, I had a routine for the tournament. Like what I do is I wake up at around six o'clock, I go for some jogging, mm -hmm. and then I will have my breakfast. Okay. Nandini must have known like, where is the breakfast? And the tournament hall is like one kilometer away. Oh, yeah. Literally. 
So just to have going to have a breakfast itself will uh, complete your workout session in the morning. <laughs> So I will have my breakfast and I just came back home and then I mean to my room and I was searching. Then I found this interesting idea like F4 line, mm -hmm. which I had in the mind in the previous day, but then I somehow it clicked me, okay. Also my coach, Ms. Peshwaran, sir, he was also there. Mm -hmm. He also said, okay, let's try F4 here. Okay. That's all. That's the preparation we had totally. <laughs> F4. <laughs> So, so are you a player who uh, like uh, plays on the board? Miss, as you said, like F four is the only preparation you had. After that, you were on your own. Yeah. So the decision of making F four took me like oh one and a half days. I mean, a half a day, I would say. <laughs> so okay. after that, I was at least confident at mind level that okay, somehow I've decided what to make on board, mm -hmm. and why I'm not so. I mean, not so in pressure, like because I haven't prepared and all, because it's a surprise element. Mm -hmm. Your opponent is also uh, is going to get surprised when you play moves like this F4, because yeah. it's not the main line. Mm -hmm. The main line is uh, different. Bishop e2, Cas and F4. And I haven't played F4 in any F3 of my. F3 is also something which uh, somebody has played against me, so I know like this is also there. Bishop e2, Castle, yes, that is also very mm -hmm. safe. Yeah. yeah. So you surprised him with F4 and. Uh, then he played queen c7. Queen c7. So f4 also, I, I just yeah. saw a few moves mm -hmm. after f4. Mm -hmm. And I thought like b5 was the main line. Okay, b5. So yeah. what they black do is they uh, avoid uh, this queen c7 move mm -hmm. and directly play bishop b7 mm -hmm. and uh, knight bd7 without okay. queen c7. Okay. okay. So Without this queen. used to be the main line. Mm -hmm. Of course, you must have game, prepared uh, for bishop uh, miss b5, right? Yeah, b5 I prepared for b5, but queen c7 mm -hmm. came uh, into the. Yeah, queen c7 uh, he played. Yeah. Okay. And then... Okay, and also during this preparation, mm -hmm. and okay, as I said, I was doing this last minute preparation. Okay. You know, as an engineering student, it's very common. You do this last <laughs> minute thing every time. I was running late for the round. I think uh, it's 9 o'clock, and 9 o'clock I was actually preparing mm -hmm. and I have to like cross one kilometer with running to reach the tournament hall. <laughs> I think so there is a 15 take... minutes grace time. Okay. So almost you have five, five, six minutes you can say for running. I think I lost around 10 minutes in the game, like just five minutes before the, uh -huh. so Walk that was also, or... yeah, yeah, that was also there in the, my mind. Like <laughs> I just reached five minutes before the game. Okay. By the way, yeah. here one question is there. Ankur uh, Srimal is asking, doesn't f4 block the bishop completely? It's like, uh, this is, I know like this is your opening and everything, but it is a curious question from a beginner's perspective. Mm -hmm. Would you like to answer? f4, so right now the pawn structure is very dynamic. It is not fixed. Yeah. You can play moves like f5, you can play moves like e5, which mm -hmm. opens up the position. Yeah. So f4 is temporary. Temporary. So it's not blocking. Temporary. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Queen c7. Then you went for queen to f3. Uh, Akash, yeah. whenever you feel like you can tell me to stop, okay? Means like even if I am rushing or something like that, do let me know. Sure. Okay? sure. Yeah. So queen f3 and your opponent played b5 at this point like instead of playing at the previous move. And yeah. uh, here maybe his idea is to play bishop b7, right? There, there mm. is nothing else. So bishop b7. So yeah. it's a normal. Uh, a kind of uh, structure like mm -hmm. baby should be seven night be seven yeah. he was following the same one mm -hmm. so you played bishop to d3 supporting the pawn and uh, bishop, bishop to b3 bishop d3 bishop b7 and now here you played a very uh, interesting move i will say you are not casting mm -hmm. anything and uh, you committed for g4 uh, yeah what about uh, g4 <laughs> So it's very evident that I'm ordered to like go for the long side castle mm -hmm. and I want to create an attack on the king side. Mm -hmm. So so why so, didn't you go for the long castle early? Yeah, so that is the decision I have to make on board, whether to go for long castle or g4. Mm -hmm. When you play long castle here, mm -hmm. black and go with b4 counterattack immediately. Okay, the knight on c3 is under attack. You need to move the knight. Yeah. Knight a4, is it a good... Uh, no, I don't uh, think so. It will be... Knight a4 um, is possible, right? Or no? 
Knight A4. Yeah, I can play Knight B D7 and Knight C5. Ah, idea. So, ah, okay. So you just want to take yeah. Takes then maybe D C5 is also possibility. D C5. Yeah, D C5, C4, C4, and the E4 pawn will solve. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So you had uh, different ideas there, but uh, Black is getting the counterplay. That's why you did not go for the long castle first, mm -hmm. and you played G4. Yeah. Okay. And uh, there he played knight to c6. The knight on d4 mm. uh, is there, but you did not stop. You just kept uh, going with g5. <laughs> no, no, you you can long castle. You long castle. Yeah, you long castle. Yeah, okay. And because now b4, I can just play knight c2. He has developed his knight to c6. Okay. So, which means I can uh, capture on c6 and put my other knight to d4. Ah, okay. Putting the knight in the center of the board is very important. We yeah, talk so about is... this thing to every beginner. <laughs> mm. Okay, so long castle uh, was played, and now long castle. Uh, he went with knight a five. Yeah, probably to play knight c four and to open up the yeah c5 knight c four. So he was trying to create some uh, counterplay on the queen side. Mm -hmm. And uh, after knight to a5, you, you went on to play g5 in this situation. And yep. the knight is under attack, knight went to d7 square. Okay, mm -hmm. like uh, I would like to ask you, like, why king b1? Why not uh, go for the thing on the king side mm -hmm. itself? You played king b1 in the position, but yeah. uh, instead of that, uh, why not go for something else like on the king side? Because I know, like, uh, this is the standard mm -hmm. way to play, but uh, from a viewer's perspective, I feel like we should uh, explain a little bit. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So here, the other options we can consider was the attack f5 move mm -hmm. and uh, go with uh, breaking the center. Mm -hmm. But whenever you play the move like f5, what happens is you lose this control over the e5 square. Okay. So here, knight e5 comes with the tempo. Okay. Attacking the queen, you mean to say? Yeah, attacking the queen. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say if you're moving the queen to h3 to create more pressure on e6. Yeah. You can uh, continue with uh, b4, knight attacking the knight. Okay. And if knight e2, mm -hmm. then you can just capture on d3 ah, and e4. Yeah, perfect. Knight d3, no, you cannot really capture with the c pawn. You have to mm -hmm. capture with the rook and then bishop into e4 and one of the rook will fall in this case. Nice. Yeah, nice tactics. So, <laughs> so what happens is when you try to attack, you mm -hmm. have to be make sure that you don't give any counterplay for your opponent. Correct. Here, I what I felt was White has a slightly good position because he has centralized all his pieces mm -hmm. and he has completed all his development. Okay. So only threat what I see from Black's point is Knight C4 trying to get one bishop out. Mm -hmm. So I thought King B1 would be a simple answer to that, so that I can preserve my bishop if he comes with Knight C4. Okay. I can play Bishop C1. Ah, okay. And also continue my attack after that. Okay. Cool. Okay. Here uh, B4 was played. You uh, played Knight C2. Nandini, uh, would you like to ask some questions uh, as a viewer also? Please uh, ask. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think for, for the time being, you have asked the questions and he has already answered about Bishop C1, King yeah. B1. Uh -huh. So I'll ask uh, as it goes forward. Okay, okay, fine. So Knight C4 was played by Sandipan here. And uh, as you planned earlier, the idea of King B1 was to play Bishop to C1. So you played Bishop C1. And uh, here he played G6, probably to get the Bishop on this uh, long diagonal. A1 to H1. Yeah. Okay. The problem for black is he doesn't have enough pieces to continue his attack. Mm -hmm. So he has to do, he has to bring in more pieces. So the g6 move and trying to keep the bishop on this diagonal will help him to create some threats. Okay. But uh, don't you think so? Like uh, g6 is also some kind of, uh, like you are yeah, he is giving weakening. some, yeah, weakening and he is giving some targets for you to attack. True, that's very true. Like he's giving a target for me on G6 to attack. Mm -hmm. But on the counter side, when we are talking, he doesn't have enough pieces to attack for himself. So which will ultimately 
uh, help white to give over with that continuous attack right so yeah, yeah. white is able to do this normal h4 h5 g6 break hmm. here means he's going to be uh, yeah simply uh, have a this is your advantage yeah be, be just to clarify okay like if we place bishop e7 you are saying like h4 if castling is there you will play h5 and sacrifice the pawn on g6 square um yeah castle h5 and uh, next move i'm going to get g6 ah, okay and you will ruin the pawn structure on this side of the board and that will be good for you because uh, all these pieces yeah. are there okay that was the idea Okay, mm -hmm. so he played g6. He is not allowing you to play all those things, uh, but still, uh, still you played h4. Yeah, so I'm going to stick with my plan anyway. Mm -hmm. So black has to make the decisions. Like, what is he going to do? Okay. So one straightforward plan from uh, like here, I feel like bishop g7 uh, is also there, right? Bishop g7 mm -hmm. is play with the uh, like previous move. Yeah, he. That's the point of g6. He wants to play bishop g7 and keep the bishop on this diagonal. Okay. In this right. game, I was calculate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he can go king side, right? He'll have to go queen side only. I mean, king side looks too dangerous to castle. Uh, you mean yeah, he's server, going but... with the uh, queen side castling only, but he will keep the bishop on g7. That's it. Like he will play bishop mm -hmm. g7 and rook j, mm -hmm. and keep it closed, and he will castle on the queen side. During the game, I calculated this variation where if it's possible, like knight yeah, takes e6. Yeah, e6. yeah, sure, sure. I'll I'll show that variation. Instead of h4, you calculated knight into e6. Okay. Yeah. And if he captures, and knight d4. Okay. The pawn on e6 is under attack, and uh, there is only one way to stop, like save it. Knight c5 is yeah. there, right? Knight no, c5, c5 loses. Falls. Uh, yeah, c4 knight falls. Knight. Yeah, and if the king uh, supports the pawn. Then, uh, I think then you can just four. yeah queen or f5 four. right depends where the king goes you can also blast with f5 if, mm -hmm. if you need to okay let, let's suppose king f7 is played to support the pawn um i think you can still play the move like uh, queen g4 okay queen g4 and attack here on this uh, okay maybe king f7 queen g4 you have this rook e8 right yeah rook yeah e8. that's that's what i was thinking to support the pawn there okay that's i, I was thinking okay f5 f5 I, I, I don't know if it's too many sacrifices <laughs> you can't do as many as sacrifices <laughs> That's no, but the problem, problem of f5 is like you cannot capture with the pawn, right? You no, have no, to no, capture with the knight. Knight right into ah. exactly. <laughs> so what we do is first play queen h3, attack the pawn, rook e8, and then play f5. Ah, so okay. That, uh, mm -hmm. Then play f5. By the way, you have one fan here, uh, Samarth Prabhu. Uh, he is saying like, nice to meet Grandmaster Akash Ganesh, India 66 Dynasty. Yes, yes, and uh, yeah, nice to and, meet uh, He has some uh, like done the research also. You are the youngest national chess champion in India at the age of yeah, 16. which which we will talk about very soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we will true, talk true, about true. Uh, many other things. Uh, there are not only chess which Akash does. He is not just a grandmaster. He is an engineer. He is a coach. We will talk about all those things. Just uh, uh, wait for a while, guys. Uh, first, learn something and then we'll talk about it. We'll take your questions also. So, be ready with your questions, whatever questions you have. Maybe about your life lessons also you can take uh, from him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, I feel like Akash is a perfect example who balances both the things. Life plus uh, chess, you can say. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Atul, for this. Uh... Yeah, so so you you guys can ask him. So h4 is the one. Uh, knight into e6 uh, is uh, very uh, interesting. Why did you not like? Why did you choose to play h4 instead of knight e6? Then you were not that clear, or what was? So the... what I no, I I thought knight into e6, f and e6, knight yeah. d4. Yeah. Uh, I can just play knight d b6. Okay. And if I capture on e6, I'm mm -hmm. getting a good compensation with two pawns, mm -hmm. but. After queen f7, what I felt was why it was why it didn't have that momentum going on. Mm -hmm. Like it's good position, I would say. It's a good position since the knight on e6 is there. I can play f5 at some point. Yeah. But there is no like clear-cut attack which I can which I could see with the move h4, h5. Okay. Breaking. So you wanted to in a way keep the tension going 
and uh, yeah. just so 986 looks like an aggressive move mm-hmm. but after the taking the two pawns 986 it becomes like a positional positionally it's better kind of time time ah. like you know yeah yeah so that type of position i'm getting it but whereas h4 looks little bit slow mm-hmm. but it's like a very consistent way progressive way to attack okay black's uh, position so here he played bishop g7 he's sticking with his plan of action here uh, mm-hmm. did you uh, like consider the moves which nandini was talking like long castle or something else in this situation yeah like means okay so, he did he did not play it but i'm just saying like did you consider those moves also like just to run away from the main action long castle is also a possibility i think it's uh, it's it's the anyway he has to do with the long castle not because he can't maintain the position for a long time yes anyway h5 h8 g6 and then f5 break will come mm-hmm. e6 everything will be hanging yeah so yes. he has to go with long castle so when he played the move g6 itself it is very evident that he is going to be preparing bishop g7 mm-hmm. and go for long castle yeah. and defend the g7 bishop by playing rook g8 ah okay like this rook g8 so this is the structure he is going to maintain mm-hmm. but still uh, you said like okay i am going to push my pawn <laughs> yeah do what you want so he so my plan is very simple just have the solid position and continue my attack okay not so you played h5 move and he played rook g8 probably with the idea of if h6 is played he will play bishop to h8 h8 yeah. <laughs> he'll he just wants to uh, keep uh, this bishop on this diagonal but he did not play mm-hmm. h6 you played uh, queen to h3 in this situation attacking the pawn on e6 were you already thinking about knight into e6 here or uh, yeah, so? yeah every move you will be thinking with knight into e6 <laughs> <laughs> this kind of question <laughs> yeah so here finally he long castle nandini's move mm-hmm. has uh, come up on the board and okay uh, now here, okay i think yeah. till i mean rook h f1 till here yeah. it's a very slow game from white side right mm-hmm. yeah it's not really slow i wouldn't say it's very slow you have all your you have the space advantage completely yeah i have everything like a good position but everything was very instructive i, I was like following all the principles mm-hmm. in chess how we should attack step by step that's what i was doing till here you you were okay, following I have, the uh, yeah i have a question akash like if you're just going to say practically speaking right what is mm-hmm. the uh like who is better i'm not asking you for a proper evaluation but white mm-hmm. black or equalish like how would you uh, evaluate the position so in this position it's very uh, i would say easier to play with white pieces rather than black because white as i said i was playing all the natural moves all the principled moves which you would have learned from your olden days uh, how to attack how to push the pawns where to place the pieces but if you see from black's perspective he has to make a lot of decisions he has to make some critical decisions like going with g6 p7 He has to choose the long castle, whether to play b4, knight f, and xc4 plans. So it was so, hard for black. So would you say white is slightly better in that case? Practically speaking, we are not asking in general; we are talking practically. <laughs> yeah, I would say white is slightly better white in this slightly position. White is slightly better. Yeah, and uh, one more thing, uh, Akash, on our streams, we try to use, uh, like, try not to use in general at all. Like, whenever we are commenting about some games, also, no. Mm-hmm. we just talk about what we feel about the position uh, we don't say like engine is saying this and that that's why today we don't even have the evaluation bar <laughs> that's good that's good so yeah it is very important for the in viewers also yeah so to learn to uh, analyze on your own even though you make lot of mistakes mm-hmm. so this is going to help you in uh, your own game like when you play the tournament game you will have a better understanding yeah and many many beginners and intermediate players uh, i know they play on chess.com b chess and after every game the analysis is ready for them the computer <laughs> analysis <laughs> does it really no. help does it really help <laughs> no not really because uh, what if you use it in a proper way it is useful but mm-hmm. you can't use it like in a proper way when you you have everything by ready like next to it. yeah 
So once your game is finished, you they are giving everything. Like what is yeah, the mistake? Everything. They are basically so, spoon feeding you, right? Then yeah. You're not yeah. going to work your head. Here, Kritika mm. is there. I maybe he she is your friend. She said hello, and she's like engine kills the interest in the position. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. You are. What happens is you will start. following the lines which engine suggests mm-hmm. and you will stop thinking on your own yeah yeah that's Takes true it's away the creativity creativity and mm-hmm. uh, as uh, i also play tournaments and all that so nandini also prefers uh, this thing that we should not uh, use the engine while commenting or analyzing because in a way streaming is also a learning experience for both of us like to, with okay. you we are okay. actually learning here not only the viewers <laughs> we are also learning mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So here, uh, Sandipan played king to b uh, eight, uh, and as yeah. you said, like uh, he needs to play his moves very carefully. And now, finally, you broke through. You played f five, yeah. and there is no knight e five with the tempo. That's what I can say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So f five, yeah. Yeah. And uh, here, uh, Sandipan actually captured on bishop into d four. Isn't it little bit surprising because he tried to save the bishop, and now he gave the bishop. Yeah, it is a surprising. Mm-hmm. I also didn't see that coming when mm-hmm. I played at five. Mm-hmm. But my plan is like either I can go with the moves like uh, the pressure on e six is too much, right? Like he has to close it with e five at some point. Ah, okay. So right. if he if he is going to close it with e five, mm-hmm. then the g seven bishop will become a very bad piece. Correct. Correct. So here, yeah, so he decided to give it. Yeah, but in a way, don't you think so? Like he. Uh... Kind of wasted the thing, like so. Moves are wasted somehow. Since the plan did not work out the way mm-hmm. it uh, was, like, should have been. The bishop was very important, right? but it went away. <laughs> Some way, if you are going to fix the structure with e5, then the dynamic of the position changes. Mm-hmm. Then the g7 bishop is not a good bishop anymore. g7 yeah, yeah. bishop becomes the good bishop according to the pawn structure. Mm-hmm. And also, if you see. both of them have castled on queen side yes i made like lot of moves on the king side with h5 f5 g5 yeah correct so we don't know which is the waste of moves is it, <laughs> is it me who played h5 g5 f5 is waste or you know so yeah. it's a it's a very uh, hard question to answer who who wasted the moves <laughs> Yeah, true, true. Now, now as uh, we can see, like Black has decent number of pieces on the queen side, so his king is not completely in danger. But you are mm-hmm. playing on the queen side here in this position, and he captured on G into F six and E into F six, and then he closed the center as you mentioned earlier with E five. Okay, so I think E five. Now we can ask the viewers. Yes. So guys, uh, here, what would you play? Like. Uh, Think and tell us, like okay. So it's and very viewers, interesting. Because you make a make a smart choice. If you are asked a question, you have to think of moves you would never think of. <laughs> That is the point of a question in every stream. Yes. Let's see who is going to answer us here. There are uh, so many people are there. Almost twenty people are there. I hope that they will uh, get the answer. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We'll wait. We'll wait uh, for a while. I, I, I'm sure I watched this game live, but I don't remember a thing. <laughs> live, you mean live? Live, you mean to say like in the tournament hall? Yeah. Because I remember, like, I, I remember Akash going around, walking around. Like, used to be that one tall guy walking around during the game. <laughs> Even after jogging one kilometer, he still walks in the <laughs> tournament hall. <laughs> no, Sikkim was a. It's a. It was very cold at that time, right? It was December. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. uh, winter. It was very cold. Okay. okay, we have some moves here. Uh, by the way, Akash Maverickson is mm-hmm. saying ninety six dynamics. Uh, Chess Miss Karthik is our friend. Uh, he okay. is saying like ninety uh, six. So, and one move is there G six. So maybe we can consider knight e six and g six, but g six I don't think so. The piece is hanging straight away, right? Mm, yeah. Or uh, you can say it. Yeah, I don't think knight so. You can. Knight is also hanging the piece. Yeah, knight e six also a hanging piece. Yeah, true. G six is ruining the pawn structure, though, right? I mean the connected mm. pawn. So 
yeah g6 True. i think uh, ankur i think after uh, you play g6 i think i will capture and wherever you capture the rook will uh, just go in front of the pawn uh, there will not be anything okay but uh, knight e6 what do you think about knight e6 like uh, akash Should okay uh, uh, one question akash yeah you got yeah. 96 in this position but you were thinking about 96 10 12 moves ago like how mm. did it feel on the board while you were playing the 96 and finally you played it on the board so i, I <laughs> <laughs> so nature is saying something to me so i have to do that 96 somehow in this game <laughs> it's what i felt because here okay okay one more uh, thing like uh, yeah. uh, you went for 96 as uh, uh, it seemed and but uh, did you consider like because for uh, i will tell you from like uh, perspective of a beginner or even say like a newcomer because many of them watch the stream they usually don't go for 96 they will consider the moves like knight e2 knight b3 like how do you come up with the decision like 96 like how do you dare because uh, you are playing against mm-hmm. such a strong player and uh, like How, how, like how do you get yeah. to that move i'm just asking psychologically so what do we do is first yeah. thing is you uh, consider the position mm-hmm. that you would have been doing it throughout the game like what are the pluses and what are the minuses you have in the position mm-hmm. second thing what you do is you will find the candidate moves in the position right okay like whatever you said like g6 is also a candidate move knight e6 is a candidate move knight b3 knight e2 mm-hmm. and then you evaluate accordingly to what is happening with which each and every move so my first instinct was 96 because i was like a little bit tempted with it but i also considered the normal like looking knight b3 move mm-hmm. i think Means you did consider also, you, you did consider yeah. knight b3 kind of yeah definitely okay so if it's a winning position with simple without uh, sacrificing anything i would be happy to play it right okay so that is the simple thing i would do So knight b3, but what I thought was he is going to play the move d5. Okay, I'll just play the move just for the clarification. Knight b3 mm-hmm. and d5, right? and then uh, yeah. Since... Here I felt a little bit of discomfort with my position, even though it's if uh, if you give it to an engine, it was showing knight b3 is the best move, I believe. Oh really? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, knight b3 <laughs> was showing us the best. Move. I I just asked this thing because uh, this kind of a move is like safe, no. Usually players don't think about knight e6. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, can yeah. we show another move though instead of d5? Like why rook g5 is not possible? If anyone has a question, I mean they would have it in their minds to why rook g5 is not possible. How is it possible? <laughs> How is it possible, right? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm I'm just saying in the chat what happens, right? The bishop is on c1. We have to just remind them that uh, the bishop okay. uh, is there. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. why you keep the bishop. in the first rank so that yeah. your opponent may not see it sometimes <laughs> like you have saw in this game right like richard versus I mean carlson versus magnus yeah, yeah. he he forgot bishop about the Dado. bishop yeah, yeah that actually also. came to my mind now and then i asked you that question <laughs> yeah so right exactly. b3 and d5 you were not feeling comfortable that's why uh, you said like okay this is not comfortable let's sacrifice the piece Yeah, it was like I felt somewhat I had like a good advantage in the position, but somehow after this d5, black is getting enough counter play. Mm-hmm. Is getting able to rearrange his pieces. A5, A4 is coming, mm-hmm. and my pawn structure there is not so like doing much. Yeah, the f5, g5, h5 is like some fancy show I'm doing, but nothing is nothing happening. much. Yeah. <laughs> AJ Style is also saying like uh, Richard also missed Bishop. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. <laughs> okay, coming back to the game, you play knight e6 in this situation, and now the knight mm-hmm. is attacking two pieces at the same time. So it's a fork. So almost it's compulsory for him to capture. So he yeah. captured f into e6, f into e6. The knight on d7 is under attack, and uh, as you mentioned, like you need to calculate candidate moves and uh, everything. Mm-hmm. That's how you came up with knight e6 move. Mm-hmm. But uh, you must have calculated for uh, other things also, right? Like what is the advantage of pawn on e6 and everything? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is the evaluation I had to do with knight b3 and knight e6. I yeah. understood like knight b3 is, will also give me some advantage. I don't know how much, mm-hmm. but some advantage I can read in with knight b3 because I have still the pressure. But with knight e6, I saw a little bit of forcing things because knight and e6, f and e6 mm-hmm. opens up my d3 bishop. 
a okay. first thing mm -hmm. and now i am attacking both the d7 knight and h7 pawn Correct. once i am able to capture the h7 pawn my g5 and h5 pawn they will become a clear passed pawns yeah it's a clear passed pawn and once it reaches g6 and h6 we have this old saying you have a passed pawn which has g6 and h6 means it, it's equal to a rook yes. so at least i know that materially i am not down <laughs> Yeah. So, so and, yeah. yeah, it was evident for me. Like once I'm able to defend my queen side well, mm -hmm. I can simply win the game if I'm able to push the pawns ah. just to g7 and h7. It was very uh, clear cut plan after this for white okay. what to do and all. Okay. So here, uh, knight b6 was played by Sandeepan, and you came up uh, with rook f7. Rook on the seventh rank. We all know that this is the best place for the rook. Mm -hmm. And uh, he played queen to c5. You captured the pawn on h7, and uh, I I feel like you might be feeling very confident here that uh, this game is in your pocket. Not at all. Not at all. Not so at was, all. <laughs> yeah, not at all. I was in uh, time pressure. Like I think I had like 20, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean time pressure in the sense that uh, it only after forty moves you get this time control change, right? Mm -hmm. And I know like the the race it's it's actually a race right now. Like mm -hmm. why black what he has to do is he is going to try to checkmate me on the queen side because i have less number of pieces on queen side mm -hmm. for me it is to defend the king queen side and push my pawns on the yeah. king side yeah so it was uh, really um, and uh, from black's perspective i feel like he has some threats of uh, maybe rook c8 knight a3 check and knight a4 maybe knight a4 yeah knight yeah. a4 yeah. putting some knight pressure means that it is not like black is without the bullets he also has some kinds of things to attack on you mm -hmm. true so here uh, he played rook g8 attacking the pawn on e6 but he is well protected no worries but still uh, you gave some protection with bishop f5 Probably you wanted to just uh, make sure that the pawns are uh, ready to flow forward, right? Just go forward. Mm, I have to move. I have to make a move here, right? So useful move. I don't have anything. Uh -huh. Like if I play g6, or maybe if I make h6, could be a useful move. But mm -hmm. it's better. Okay, he was threatening bishop d5. I think can he be attacking the six pawn? Ah, okay. Like so that, it's better to defend. Yeah, play, yeah, better to defend. So he played bishop d5. Anyhow, he played. I and maybe he's putting some pressure on a2 pawn but you said like no worries i will play g6 <laughs> yeah and uh, rook to c8 uh, okay knight a a3 is the threat or okay. no knight now a3 is, uh, knight a3 is not any threat right or is it a threat i think his threat is to play e4 ah, uh, let's okay. say i play h6 here okay uh, you may play e4 move now his threat is knight a3 check yeah correct Actually, he has like one, two, three, four pieces attacking my uh, yeah. queen side. Yeah, this can also be. Like, suppose that seven is played. What uh, is the exact uh, threat? Let's see. I, I think it's uh, knight a3 check and. Uh, if you capture, then of course, like queen c2 check, king a1, two. and queen a2 is a check and mate. And if it doesn't capture, place king a1. King a1. You can capture uh, c2. Queen two. Yeah. yeah, king b1. And now. Now again you can play knight a3 check, but king a1 yeah. now okay yeah, queen c1 queen c1, yeah, queen c1 right. rook c1 and I, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it's a classic checkmate which uh, they give in uh, chess.com many times. <laughs> I think even queen c2 is possible directly, right? Instead of knight c2. Mm, yeah, both are uh, uh, even queen c2 should win immediately. Yeah, queen c2 is also uh where knight a3. Knight a3 yeah, king a1 king queen a1. c2. Oh queen c2 in that position. Oh nice. The yeah, the idea is just queen b1 check or queen if he captures queen a2. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but with the checks, you are forcing the matters. That's the only thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was uh, basically the idea. So, yeah, rook c8, and after that, you decided to come back with your queen. You played queen d3, supporting the c2 pawn. Yeah, okay. Mm, yeah, queen d3, I think, was the only move there to defend this e4 idea. Yeah, so he played e4 all the way attacking mm. your uh, queen here. And okay. uh, now what? He is giving you the pawn for free. <laughs> okay, there is an idea behind this move, e4. Mm -hmm. if, if you capture, then knight e5 is there, right? Knight e5 yeah, and uh, rook as well as queen both will be under attack. And he played that move in the game. 
Yeah, that's what happened in the right room. Yeah. So what to do? Um, Maybe the viewers can tell us. Guys, it's not that uh, easy, right? Okay. But still, one thing is there, Akash, that whenever mm -hmm. he captures on uh, F7, let's suppose, mm -hmm. you will be having three connected fast points ready to quit. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's, but he, he doesn't do that. <laughs> yeah, he will not do that. Okay, can we play? Okay. Sit. Rookie 8 is a weird move. AJ Styles is saying. Yeah, rookie 8, uh, we were not thinking. Okay, there but are... Rookie eight... Is like the perfect square to attack the e6 pawn because else I would capture bishop into g8. Mm -hmm. Okay, here Kritika is asking uh, that can't we go for queen exchange? How will we exchange queen d4? Is one of the ideas to exchange the queens. And another uh, move which is suggested is queen into a6. But queen a6, okay. I think the e4 bishop is just hanging, right? It's just mm -hmm. uh, yeah, queen a6, bishop into e4. I mean, yeah, I just uh, bishop. Bishop e4. Okay, there is a mate on a7. Ah, queen a7 is the mate. Okay, okay. So queen first knight into f7. So he has ah, to take Yeah, knight f7, e f7 now. And bishop into e4. Now the mating threat is that. Ah, okay. Even mate even if uh, queens here in this position, queen c2, king a1, and queen b1 uh, is a checkmate. Cool. Yeah. So there is no time for queening. <laughs> okay. And to Kritika's question, it's yeah. queen d4, yeah. bishop into e4 first. Okay. Bishop into e4. Yeah. Bishop c2 is a threat. Queen c2 is a threat. I think you have to capture queen into e4. Uh, and again, now we can take with knight f7 because now you can't capture e f7. Ah, e f7 is not possible. But uh, g f7 is there, right? G f7, now you capture e6 pawn. Oh. The c2, queen oh. or e4 is overloaded. Wow, wow. And again, the checkmate which we considered earlier queen e6, then queen c2, king a1 means uh, you can just capture on. Uh, C1, rook C1, rook C1 is a check. Wow. Mm -hmm. There were some uh, interesting threats from black side. You have to be careful. Yep. So, okay. So here, uh, people still did not get your move. Maybe we can uh, get the move. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, here, okay. uh, Akash played a very surprising move. And uh, I will say, like, you, you have to be very uh, good in calculation to play this kind of moves. <laughs> <laughs> Niranjan Rao is saying hi Akashan. Maybe he is your friend. Niranjan Rao, yeah, yeah. He is uh, from the castle, right? No? Ah, said. Okay, castle. Yeah, but college. College, college, yes. Yeah. Hi, college. Niranjan. Yeah. yeah. Black is the one who always uh, looks winning, but actually did not happen. It is uh, <laughs> white who actually won the game. Uh, AJ Styles have come up with a move queen into d5. <laughs> yeah, yeah, somebody so. somebody has talked about the move queen into d5. <laughs> that is a brilliant move here in this situation. And uh, okay, what is the idea of queen sacrifice? Knight captures the queen, and then what? Bishop into d5 into means maybe. yeah, rook into is the only option. Bishop into it's d5 close. is not uh, possible because of queen c2, queen c1 mate. So rook d5, queen is under attack. And uh, okay, queen has how many moves? One, two, okay, three moves only, not, nothing else. Or maybe we can go behind queen c6, but that doesn't look good. Queen, rook yeah, queen five, c4, seven. queen uh, b6, b6, queen g1. Yeah, these three so, options. And did you consider uh, all three options? Yeah, I considered all three options here. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, uh, here here there is something in your language I think I did not understand. So can you please read it in the chat if uh, you are looking at the chat. <laughs> <laughs> this is not my, this is not uh, this is not Tamil actually. It's, uh, it's a different language. Okay, okay, you also don't know. I think it's Telugu. Uh, okay, let it let it. <laughs> but the chat itself answered the question. <laughs> Why not bishop into d5? Okay, they have a question. Why not bishop into d5? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, bishop into d5, queen into c2, it's okay. Instead of uh, queen, queen d5, five, queen d5, yeah. Then the d3 queen, rook b7, check is there. Uh, I think knight into d3, rook b7, king a8, the d5 is hanging. Rook b7, mm -hmm. king a8, and rook b6, queen into d5 is there. Yeah, yes. queen into d5 is there. Yeah. This is the difference between that. With, uh, you cannot no longer just keep checking the black king, mm -hmm. it is safe. 
that's why bishop into d5 is not any move guys queen into d5 and the knight into d5 as we were talking about three options here after rook d5 uh, queen b6 queen c4 and queen to g1 yeah yeah the problem what i was facing here is i was a little bit confident with this position but i didn't have enough time to calculate all the variations like mm -hmm. but here i this position till here i calculated like i found that queen b6 is the only move which uh, black should be making okay any other move is uh, is just bad mm -hmm. because let's say if we place moves like queen to g1 mm -hmm. we can simply play moves uh, rook b7 check rook b7 check wow if yeah. captures then rook d1 and capture the queen yeah i just captured the queen <laughs> and you have two bishops plus these uh, three pawns mm -hmm. oh, yeah amazing guys i'll just if show plays, you yeah okay okay d5 also you can have bishop into d5 d5 yeah yeah correct so much of uh, play here okay uh, queen g1 is out of question queen and queen c4. g1 rook b7 check king a8 is also possible oh you will not even capture yeah <laughs> Now you have to capture rook takes d6. Rook takes d6. D6. Yeah, rook a6 is mate afterwards. Ah. Yeah, we if you see the position, we only have one piece for queen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one, two, three, four pieces are there. Black has four pieces, only one piece is there. That two on bishop. <laughs> yeah. But but, but uh, uh, the king is completely exposed. That's uh, that's what I can feel it here. Mm -hmm. And is there any way to stop queen, uh, rook into a6? Maybe queen f1. Queen I think f1. knight c6 is there. Yeah, knight c6. Yeah. Queen f1 means we can play rook f7 check and win the queen. Ah, yeah. Rook f7 check. Knight c6. Uh, are knight you going c6, to capture? Um, Shop into c6 is uh, possible? Because now rook c6. c6, uh, rook yeah, c6. Rook c6 is, uh, no, no. Like bishop into c6, rook into c6 you will capture, right? Yeah, rook c6 is there. Bishop into c6 is no. Or maybe we can just play rook d7. Uh, uh, rook d d7. Rook d, yeah, no, no, rook b d7. Okay, rook b d7. And next move, I'm going to capture the uh, c6. Ah. And if I try to support it with queen c5? Yeah, I'm just push the pawns. Hit 6, g7. Ah, seven, you, you, you have baby queens on the board. <laughs> So this is a common theme actually. What happens is when you, like even though you're materially down, Black's position is tied up, like in most of the cases in the position. Like he yeah. can't really improve his position. Yeah. And White also can't really make any peace moves, but he has this so extra pawns which he can just push it up to make a new queen. Yeah. But you are talking about queen b6 should be the move which he should play. Right. Yeah, queen b6 is the move which I found is the right move and during the game. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find any winning, like clear winning uh, variation for that. Okay. I think I what I calculated in the game was rook into d6 for queen b6. Okay. If and he captures, queen d6, yeah, rook b6. Yeah, he has to capture. So now rook b7 check, king a8 check and get back the queen. Okay. So he'll play queen c6, takes, takes. So now I'm a root down, but uh, you know, like the position is still complicated. I can just play moves like g4. I mean g7, sorry. G7. g7. H6 is the idea. Knight, knight takes d7, e takes d7, rook d8, h6. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. This bishop now it is protecting, huh? And he cannot capture mm -hmm. anything. <laughs> okay. Okay, wait. Uh, but, h6 uh, means rook g6. He can so play. Is this a uh, winning move for white? Uh, no, like it's partly... not winning. It's, it's not because winning. Okay, okay. He, I, I, he I, can I, play I... rook at 6, no? Rook at 6, bishop at 6, rook g8, and then use the king to capture the d7 pawn. Uh, yeah, yeah, this variation is not winning. It's uh, equal only. Uh, maybe bishop g5. What do you think about bishop g5? Yeah, bishop g5. Instead of h6, bishop g5. Uh -huh. uh, there was one good move from black, actually. He has to make it. Maybe he can play rook d6 first. Or no? Yeah, rook d6, I think. Yeah, yeah means rook like you can, you can give a check here. Mm, then I have to just back rank mate, I have to stop with a3, let's say. Mm -hmm. And then you capture the d7. Uh, no, but how, yeah, rook, this rook will capture, right? But still we yeah. have this rook d8, rook d8. And then, then rook into g7, rook ah, into g7. You are not going to capture d8. <laughs> ah, yeah. nice, nice. So, 
So but, this variation I calculated during the game actually. But, uh, there is no danger for white as far as I can see. Like maybe you can just capture on b4 and uh, keep playing. Mm. So this game is in, in a draw probably. Right? Yeah, probably, so, probably. With the best so, play. Yeah, best play with lane in a draw. Amazing variations, but it's like uh, if yeah, you are like the, all these yeah. moves are truly amazing. Queen b6, yeah. But after coming to the room when you check the engines, what it said was queen b6, mm -hmm. white is winning with boom g7. Wow. <laughs> that was crazy. Okay. Yeah. It's basically what type of thing is like uh, white, black doesn't have any useful boost to maintain the cushion. Mm -hmm. Like if knight in f7, he simply loses immediately after yeah, he takes f7. Yeah, we have two queens ready to go. At 6, at 7 is also there. We don't need to queen immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah, he's, he's simply, my threat is actually like simple, like h6, h7. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. And if he plays instead of, uh, for g7, rook into e6, mm -hmm. now rook f8. Okay. Still you are threatening g8 queen. Yeah. So if he plays rook e8 also, I'll just play g8 queen. Yeah, g8 queens. And uh, if rook into f8, you don't need to do anything. You can just come back with your queen. And still yeah. you have the h pawn. We have the edge pawn and the double bishops is good. Yeah, uh, gives a good advantage. Yeah, cool. but it's very hard to see. Uh, yeah, G seven is like uh, not so easy, I must say. But the other other variations also which you saw were not easy. Yeah, it was not easy, but it was forcing at least. You know, like uh, yeah. queen B six, queen rook in D six is forcing. Mm -hmm. So in chess, like forcing moves are easier for players to see. Yeah, like you, it's just a calculation you have to like keep on doing it. In the game, uh, Sandeepan played queen to c4 and... Uh, yeah, queen to c4, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, you just captured on uh, e5. Yeah, queen c4 was a blender, actually. Oh. Yeah, so but now both of you all must have been on time pressure, right? Probably at this point of time. Even Sandeepan yeah. must have been on time pressure. Yeah, I think we were around like, like 3 to 4 minutes, I think, roughly in the clock. Rook into e5, and as you said, like queen c4 was a blender. The thing is that rook b7 check is coming in this position, right? Means if d into yeah, e5 is d red, takes rook b7 rook check, check, king a8, and now you have rook into b4 followed by this because now you are supporting mm. the bishop on e4. Ah, maybe this is something he missed. And here, uh, our friend Karthik is saying, like, he it reminds him of the lab organized game. Uh, I hope that you have seen that uh, three pawns are there on f2, e2, and uh, d2 from the black side. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. <laughs> yeah. So rook into e5. You just got a piece. There, it means that he played rook c7. And uh, mm -hmm. now I, I, I love the way you played your next next move. Like very silent move. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the only move to save, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like if you move your rook on e5 square, the e4 bishop is hanging. So you just played bishop d3 to attack the queen. And now he is being asked question like where are you going to move the queen? And wherever you move the queen, then the rook will move. And still you have all these pawns on the board. So you played queen g4. And uh, then in the end, you played rook e4 in this situation. The pawn on h5 is hanging. But... Uh, but I, yeah, I think you must have seen like all these variations uh, when you played bishop d3, right? Pawn on b4. Yeah, yeah, it's getting checkmated. So yeah. rook into ch b4, b4 check. check. Uh, if king a8, then bishop e4 check? No. You can just, just capture, capture on c7. c7. Yeah, c7 then... just capture here and still it is just a winning position because. Mm. Wow. And if king so c8, I mean, then uh, bishop a6 so check, have... king d8, and then uh, it's a checkmate. Cool, cool. Very beautiful game, I must say. Like, Ak yeah, yeah. A Akash Opie should be there for this game. Like, if this game was uh, live at that time, no, and if live streaming was uh, very active, like the way it is now, uh, people would have been crazy about this game. <laughs> Amazing game. Miss, I really love the way you played in this game. Nice, nice. So much to learn, Thank so you. much to learn, like the dynamics and everything. So Amazing. where did the game end, by the way, Atul? Yeah, the game ended here, no? Like uh, here after, after uh, uh, rookie four, he just resigned. Ah, he, oh, not, he resigned uh, here. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Akash Immortal. Yes, guys, it is Akash Immortal. 
<laughs> yeah. So, uh, guys, I have uh, certain things like about this game. After this game, Akash uh, went on to become the runner. It, it, was this the runner? I finished. Uh, yeah, runner up. Actually, yeah. next, I was leading half a point. Then I lost immediately the next round against Vibram Story. Mm -hmm. And then I just, uh, I drew and I win the next game. And somehow I finished second. But somehow still, uh, managed... somehow, and I still managed to get back with 4 lakh rupees check. <laughs> yeah, I think he played the last rounds well. You got good results. I remember second last round you beat Anurag and last round also you got a result. So that's why I think you got the second spot. No, last round I drew actually. But, uh... no, that was enough. No, you sometimes a uh, draw is enough in the last round. But in the last rounds you picked up, right? Even after the loss. I think, you know, I actually, this was the round 7, right? 8th round I lost, ninth round I drew, 10th I won, oh. and 11th I drew, like... Okay. It was actually, I scored only one win after that, but I was leading right in the beginning of the tournament. So I had a good uh, tie break as well. Yeah. That helped me in the end. By, by the way, uh, we will come to the normal, like uh, other questions related to Akash. As I mentioned earlier, Akash is a multi-talented uh, grandmaster, you can say. So he has started with his uh, academy, Chess Grad. He has a big uh, team with him. I'll just show you the photo of his uh, Chess Grad team here. Akash, can you please introduce uh, your uh, team here and talk a little bit about uh, uh, your Chess Grad, the concept. How did you come up with this uh, uh, name also, Chess Grad? Okay. So yeah. Chess Grad is basically what we started with is I had an idea in mind. Why don't we do it in a, like a systematic approach mm -hmm. when we are teaching just to students? So how we do it in schools, right? Like we have a teacher teaching you the lessons mm -hmm. and what makes the student learn the lessons is when you have the exams. Correct, correct. So similarly, we had this idea of conducting a test for the students of what the topic has been taught on the, uh, let's say for the month. And we came up with this idea. So that led to me of finding a name which is similar to that of uh, school. Okay. So then I came up with this grad, which is like graduate, mm. a short name. So that led to the name and uh, our team is, you can just see in the photo, like, yeah. let's say from right to left and the one standing. Yeah. The the, Senthil is there. Yeah, Senthil. Yeah. And next one is Arun. Okay. Then Arun. So Arun. Utaya. Yeah, Utaya. Utaya. And uh, I think and the, the one, uh, I, 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 we don't know her. Maybe you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Sanyukta. She's also, uh, she also represented India in June sub juniors. Okay. Sanyukta. Mm -hmm. And next Michelle. one. Yeah, Michelle, Michelle. is there. Okay, yeah. and next one is uh, Hemantra. Okay, Hemantra. And, uh, and uh, uh, Hare yeah, Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna is there. Yeah. I have played against one, two, three of them. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the last, last one is yeah. him. Uh, his name is Naren. Okay, Naren. So basically, this is the team which you have with uh, two girls are there and uh, seven boys. Cool. Mine, Nagraha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do have a few more players who have helped us in chess grad and also be coaching. Okay. But this was the taken during a tournament. Okay. So, which happened. So yeah, we had these team okay. members. So like uh, now this uh, you came up with this thing uh, recently, like means two three uh, two years ago or what? Yeah, we started as a, what we first started started with was like we started with a social media thing. Mm -hmm. We wanted to do this uh, like free knowledge, what we how we can provide free knowledge to those people who ask us, right? So we okay. started with that. Mm -hmm. And later with the demand, like many people asked, do you have coaching, do you have centers? Mm -hmm. And then only we initiated this uh, plan. So yeah. I think it's one and a half years right now, like one one year, two and a half years. Yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, how is it going on now? One and after one and a half year. <laughs> great, great, great. I have a, like, as I said, the team is, uh, has been doing a great job, these guys. Like, mm -hmm. I'm really grateful to them for making it. This because, level. because I know, like, it is a team effort. A single person cannot really do everything. You need a good team. 
and uh, most yeah, of yeah, most of them uh, like are your friends also i it's feel like that only like i know many of them <laughs> yeah all of them like now <laughs> they have been uh, i've known most of them from my childhood days mm-hmm. so i've played with them i've been with them in tournaments mm-hmm. so it's a great uh, to have a friend friends as your team who also have the same goal mm-hmm. No, it usually you will have friends, but you don't have the same goal, same vision. But now we have everything in common, so it's working wonders for us. Wow! And uh, I, recently, I even came to know that you have started with a club in your college, uh, as you have completed your uh, miss in the in, from the same college you completed your engineering. Definitely, yeah, yeah, that, right. yeah. So you started with your uh, chess club. I would like to show that uh, club, and you have. Uh, many members in the club i'll just show the pic- picture here uh, to our viewers uh, mm-hmm. okay this is the picture uh, this is your uh, huge big club is you organize one tournament also i i follow everything on social media so i know but still <laughs> okay. we would like to know about uh, more about your club your activities what do you do here in this club can you please enlighten us <laughs> sure uh, so the club is named as castle trade so okay i I, I, college... I i will even write down the name here castle trade very interesting name i must say yeah it, it has a castle trade right t r a red 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 yeah yeah castle red club okay huh? so if you see our college like it's a red building is quite famous oh <laughs> and uh, what is your a, miss, like I, 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 what, what is your college name can you please tell college of engineering gindi okay college so it's the second uh, like in india if you see it's in the top 10 list in the engineering colleges and in tamil nadu it's in second place after iit madras oh wow so it's uh, i joined through sports quota so i i came second in sports quota and somehow joined there but it's a very uh, like those people who study there or placed in facebook google you know this wow. type of uh, <laughs> big companies <laughs> yeah big companies so when i was studying like when i was in uh, 2017 i was in the third year i was about to go to the fourth year i wanted to start this club mm-hmm. as a chess club in cg so cg okay. is a short name but what happened was since it's a government college it's very difficult to get permissions at all so it has been a very long process for me to initiate this somehow i managed finally managed to make it happen in march 2022 okay and is re- recently only one or two months yeah, back very recently <laughs> and we immediately wanted to organize a one tournament after right after that yeah. so that it took a lot of effort from the student side one of the great thing about this club is it is fully managed by students there is no staff involved in it it's fully managed from first year to fourth year students like oh. only they are handling it and even me my part is also very little in this club like i am from outside i'll just guide them but everything from hiring a chess board oh. to talking to every sponsors calling out the team like let's say you know marketing everything is handled by the club students only cool cool nice interesting and just to let the viewers know about uh, one more thing about chess grad if you want to approach uh, akash and his team like uh, to learn chess i have given the link in the description guys of this video only so you can click on it and uh, you can approach there is a contact uh, uh, us is button is also there you can uh, just uh, get in touch with akash team and learn some uh, interesting chess skills you can say and improve your chess game and uh, as uh, like i will be coming up with a new photo here uh, in the tournament i think after the tournament you had some award function where uh, okay i will just uh, yeah our uh, we everybody knows him <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay we will even ask the viewers also to talk about him he is uh, multiple times guest, national uh, guest, uh, yeah multiple times national champion and the guest is also kind of famous let's see viewers know him or not so uh, like in this function uh, like arvind was felicitated by the club so basically what this function is about it's a uh, technic I mean the cultural festival which happens in every college right so it's a cultural festival mm-hmm. 
So in that we have a very famous thing which is called as Techofers Awards. Okay. Usually, what they do is they say uh, they invite uh, people from um, cine field. Mm-hmm. A lot of celebrities you might know, like singers like Andrea and many great actors. They participate at like from Tamil Nadu. In this time, first time they introduced a special award like excellence in sports. Wow! So and from our club, what we did was like we we wrote uh, Arvind's name and gave it, and uh, there were like ten thousand students there. Wow! Wow! They choose it from their departments and they choose who is the best. Oh, they, and we uh, get from a lot of votes, right? Like, <laughs> of course, like of, Arvind deserves to be there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So out of them, like we from we, many many. Uh, Many many fields like swimming, tennis, badminton. We had a lot of players, and Arvind won the award. Yeah. Of them, yeah. He, he is the current national champion double. Yeah. Uh, like he has done the hat trick, you can say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He won uh, blitz and rapid. Yeah. And he, he has done it before. Also. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He has done before also, like the same. And at that time, like when he won, he were even won the national premier, and blitz and rapid, all three of. Uh, yeah, two thousand nineteen. It was yeah, yeah, the same tournament, right? Same ah, tournament. Yes. Same I finished second. He won first. <laughs> cool, cool. But I, I won against him in that tournament. But yeah, oh. he, uh, he was like <laughs> one point ahead, uh, and then. <laughs> Nice, nice. So, like, uh, you are doing so many activities and everything, uh, and uh, I can even show the viewers uh, one of the photo of uh, Arvind here with the team. I think this is your uh, castle red. They are wearing the red yeah. t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, we like we get sponsors from different people. Like we get that's mm-hmm. how we got the t-shirts as well. Okay, like I can. In the I... tournament, we got white shirts. Uh huh. Yeah, different. Uh, so nice, yeah, nice. Thankful to the sponsors. You are spreading chess uh, in a big way, and uh, as you said, like you conduct some tournaments also under the chess grad, and you get some sponsorship. So uh, you mm-hmm. give good amount of prizes uh, here in the tournament. I can uh, just show the viewers one tournament. It is about uh, this uh, first Tom chess grad, and uh, as uh, as far as I remember, you talked about uh, this is a little bit different variant. Yeah, this is a different variant, real time chess game. Uh huh. Real time chess so, game is what like uh, exactly? We we play real time only, you know, on, on <laughs> online. <laughs> like in this game, you don't have a chess clock first of all. Oh, you both don't have- white and black both can play at the simultaneously. You don't have to wait for your opponent to make a move. You can just play it out. Play at the same time. Yeah, and play uh, at the same time. <laughs> So that's the chess variant. It is. So basically, okay. if I play bishop c4, queen f3, queen f7, I win the game. Yeah, exactly. But what is the catch here is when you play the move queen to f3, huh. there will be a buffer time for the queen. Ah. It will be like five seconds buffer time. Okay, black so will play queen f3. Yeah, black will keep on playing. He can just block it with e6 or d5. Ah. So every move you make, there is a buffer time. In that. Wow. I I just want to ask the viewers. Have you uh, the viewers uh, chat? Can you please tell us like have you ever played this kind of variant? I never heard about this thing to be honest. Is there any website also to play this thing? Yeah, it's a strong chess and okay, uh, I, I just. I, 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 I yeah, just, there is there is a website I guess. What Akash said, I think there is because I think when I was streaming once on Twitch. Uh, one guy came to me from his website. I don't know which website it was, and he asked me to play games on stream using yeah. his uh, website. So this is what I did on stream that day, and I was like, uh, uh, just play, just keep making moves like as fast as possible. So I remember doing this once, man, last year, I believe. Okay, here yeah, some okay. of them don't know, and uh, like uh, I uh, guys, I have shared the link here, stormchess.com, and it is a very. Uh, mm-hmm interesting thing I, I i i think like i can show it to the viewers also the website i will get it yeah. on the on, <clears throat> on the screen here just one minute okay yeah in the meantime guys yeah. if you uh, guys are on instagram you should definitely follow akash he puts out lots of chess content and puzzles games positions as well as information almost every day i think every day if i'm not wrong 
and also one a uh, page of his that is chess grad that is his academy or his coaching center so uh definitely follow him akash as well as chess grad on instagram and it will help you improve your chess hopefully yeah definitely so Thank and uh, Akash, can you please guide me in this website? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Because I am very new. I am very new to this website. So if you can guide me where to go and how. Yeah, like, sure. I... Just scroll down a little bit in the website. Yeah. Scroll down. Yeah. Okay. I scroll down here. Okay. Here you will have this option. Play free. No, a little bit down. Quick game. You have. Yeah, quick game. Arenas, results, tournaments. Where should I click? There are many things. First, second, third. Okay, there are prizes also. I think they are in dollars. Oh, Big game. Second. Yeah. Leader board is there. Many people play. I think I need to play there. I. <laughs> <laughs> if so, if okay, I just, uh, yeah just Where? click play free. Just okay. click play free. Yeah. yeah. and uh, login with uh, some ids google yeah. i think is good enough yeah yeah i will i will login with the google yeah. so Atul, it's easy to register. show your email id is like this on stream i so i'm yeah. just saying for next time yeah i'm next time. <laughs> you have to hide it <laughs> <laughs> okay fine fine no issues yeah so whoever so, wants to ask any questions they will ask in your mail okay just uh, yeah just scroll it down Continue. In the meantime, okay, Akash, I will ask you by the yeah, time yeah. he uh, logs in. So mm -hmm. you won the national senior championship, that was national A, right? I mean, at age of seventeen or so. Sixteen. So you were sixteen years 16. and fourteen days. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. So at sixteen, you won the national A, and you were the youngest national champion at that point of time, especially winning national A. I mean, with so many grandmasters and our. Uh, international masters playing it's never easy mm -hmm. so like what was your preparation for the tournament and uh, how did you make it happen what was the magic what was the secret yeah i'm playing against See? magna sontario <laughs> oh there there are very few pieces so what is okay. the thing okay Let, let's let's help atul little bit and i'll come to the question okay so you just make a move And you see, there's a buffer. Like you can just make all C4, F4. Ah, okay. But don't both the players have uh, all the pieces? We yeah, don't see a, all. Yeah, this is a. He's playing against a board, so that is why. Ah, okay. So initially, ah. you will have some tutorials so that you will learn how to play. Mm hmm. Your and pieces move very slowly. Yeah, I got. Yeah, that is that is also a part of the game. Like in an animation, let's say. In this game, what is one different thing is there's no checkmate. You have to capture the king. You have to play rook into b7. Then only it's a win. There's oh. no checkmate. <laughs> But my rook is gone. No, you won. Kya baat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a fun game. Like you can try it out. And uh, also, we are conducting the tournament on 28th of May. Okay. With a prize fund of forty thousand. Okay. Nice. It's going to be a single elimination. Like. So like I like can, this uh, this is this is the twenty eighth of May five pm is there register now in the same format they are going to play like this no no it is uh, going to be a regular tournament kind of okay structure. thank God <laughs> yeah, yeah I will I will put it in the chat I mean yeah the, yeah, yeah uh, like uh, if you put uh, just say hi I will make you a moderator then only you can put the link otherwise you need to send it to me okay I'm, uh, it's just grad is the name one second yeah. So. Yeah, Chess Grad is the website. I put it in the description also. No, the name also. Name of the channel, I guess. Yeah. Ah. Uh -huh. Just send a hi, something like that. Yeah, I'll. Uh, uh, wait, where? Uh, Nandini, can you make it uh, the moderate? Because uh, for me, it is not showing the option somehow. I'll do it. No, from that live streaming link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it. Is showing you? No. Yeah. Wait, wait. Some something is um, wrong. Pop up chat. I'll do it. No, it's not showing. Yeah, yeah, it's not showing today. Something is wrong. Okay. Anyway, I will uh, maybe send it to your WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah. Just send it to me WhatsApp, and I'll do it. 
Okay, yeah, this is the tournament link. Mm -hmm. So they can uh, straight away register and uh, yeah. It's free entry only, so everybody can participate. Yes, yes, I, I, that is great. Like many people will participate. Guys, guys uh, there is a tournament which is there. This is the link for the tournament. Do uh, register. I'll even uh, see that. Okay, I'll uh, put it in the chat also after some time. Means like in the description for them to do this thing. Wow, cool. Yeah. So uh, we did so many things today, and uh, forty thousand is the total cash prize. That's a very awesome prize, I'll say. <laughs> I'll even yeah. show them. I'll even show them what is the price structure of the tournament. Is uh, these are the main prizes, guys. The first prize is uh, ten thousand. Then second is uh, eight thousand. Third is six thousand. Then four thousand, three thousand, three thousand, three thousand, three thousand. Wow, cool. Very interesting pie structure, I must say. Only eight prizes are there, or for kids eight also prizes. there are. No, it's an elimination type of thing. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. This is a fun variant. You can everybody should. I mean, you can. You guys can also play. I will also be playing probably. <laughs> <laughs> It's not like uh, it's a strong chess player is going to be. It's it's, it's uh, more than that. Like mm -hmm. you have to have other abilities also to play in this game. Okay, I I need to first uh, take the tutorials. Then only I'll be able to win something. I think. <laughs> yeah, everybody uh, first have to look at the tutorials to know understand how the game works. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, I was like, uh -huh. Nandini asked me a question, so I have to answer that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, regarding the tournament in 2012, I was, previous tournament was National B. I, I was playing very well in that tournament as well. I finished, I was like one point leading at some point in that tournament and somehow I messed up in the end and finished third place. But somehow I got, like I was happy, pretty happy. I was uh, getting selected to National B. And then this National A tournament, first round I drew with Deepan Nana and second round I lost with Lalit Babu. So like two rounds I was at half a point. At that point, I was a bit like, I, if I could get an IM norm, I would be happy. I, I was not even a title player at that point. Yeah, so I, I, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, exactly, I remember. So that point. But if you ask me before the tournament, I was very confident. Like I was confident I will win the tournament. I had even that mindset to win the tournament, even though it was a big, huge thing. But when the tournament was, a lot of things happened, like in the emotional state, after a draw and loss and all, you will have something going on in your mind. Your emotional state will be the right check. So that what happened. And somehow I slowly picked up the phase and I was going well. Before the rest day, if I had won or drew that game against Sahaj, I would have again gotten my IM now, you know, <laughs> but yeah, I lost so, uh, that game. Another thing, did you have any IM norms before this or was this your maiden IM norm that you got in the tournament? Yeah, this was the maiden IM norm. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, I never had an IM norm before. So somehow uh, everything's worked out after that. In the end, I was I got my first IM norm and the end of eighth round, I mean ninth round. And also in the end, when I won the tournament, I actually GM. I got a GM norm and IM title itself because since it was uh, considered as zone 3.7, okay. if you win that tournament, you get the IM title itself. Title itself, itself directly, yes, yes, correct. Yeah. Cool. And the record was also there since uh, before that. Uh, Vishy Anansar was having it for 16 years, three months. So I completed it 16 years, 14 days. Oh, that is like <laughs> the tournament started on my birthday, actually. So in 14 days, you became. Oh, oh, it started yeah. exactly on your birthday. Uh, yeah, the first round. It was on October 1st. It was on my birthday. And we had it's 13 rounds and one rest day, right? So it was 14 days, exactly. Okay, so I have another thing after this. Like you won at 16 years, right? Let's mm -hmm. put it at 16. After yeah. that, you also went back to studies for a while. Like, uh, mm -hmm. why didn't you, like, what was your thought process? Why did you get back to studies? Oh, usually after winning such a championship, usually players mm -hmm. will say, okay, I'm full on into chess now. <laughs> Not getting back to studies. So. So I was in 11th standard when I did this. So. Uh, it was good time to do everything at that point. 
because next you have 12th standard you can make a decision wise decision at that point when you ask me what what made me chose that decision of going to engineering is when uh, i was not able to get proper sponsorship to play abroad tournaments that was a big bit of a struggle for me at that point you know at that point we don't have that much ex- that much exposure you know yeah yeah you will be uh, going only few people will be uh, going there to play tournaments abroad it's only the grand masters they do right yeah and nowadays it's a uh, different like everybody got exposure and we need a lot of people like yeah. easy to travel so only if you get a good sponsor you are able to travel you know that was the mindset we had and with that we didn't get any sponsor maybe uh, even i didn't even get the scholarship from uh, anywhere even after becoming a national champion so that uh, that that was difficult no you know even after becoming a national champion you don't you, get, you don't yeah. get anything out of it mm-hmm. yeah it was not a, it was not even an age group nationals it was national seniors mm-hmm. yeah. so yeah but i think now things have improved nowadays the youngsters have got all opportunities that i mean earlier it was not available true true nowadays everything has improved a lot so that time uh, because of financial thing what i had mind is was like you have to have a proper education at least even in that case even in worst case you can support yourself with your education yeah but uh, yes. one one question like uh, uh, do you have any like i know like you are still very young so do you have any plans to uh, study more or do something related to the studies or you are just going to be there in uh, this uh, all chess thing like chess grad and all those things yeah that's a actually a good question <laughs> when i completed my engineering uh-huh. okay i decided like let me let me first become a grand master but i also had this idea of going doing masters abroad mm-hmm. i was i was selecting like universities from us and europe so that i can also play chess and manage my studies but this was the main option that was going on in my mind but later what happened was when i was full fledged playing for the i mean my grandmaster title like i understood like i learned a lot of things just by playing chess you know mm-hmm. not just because like as a, what i see as a education is it's not about the knowledge it's more about how your mind is well formed in it right? mm-hmm. you can it's how you live your life is based on your how you are understanding about different things no so i see education more of that sort rather than more like knowledge specific things okay so when i started chess grad or when i start some new initiatives i take a lot of responsibility with it mm-hmm. and with it what i what i believe is i will also grow myself together with that since every day i will have new learnings in it and it will help me to improve myself so which is in itself now nowadays i'm considering as a learning experience for me nice yeah. uh, very interesting way to put all the things together i will say <laughs> that it's a learning experience so uh, by this i can feel like you are going to continue with uh, chess and we all are going to benefit from it <laughs> Okay uh yeah. Atul before yeah. we go before yeah. before if you're going to end uh, before yeah. that we'll ask a few rapid fire kind of questions yeah, sure, and sure. you need to answer in one second okay like as fast <laughs> as possible okay just a I few simple questions there is questions. a lag no no there is no, no lag no. <laughs> there is no lag here there is no lag here like we are live here for us there is no lag whatever yeah. we talk you're just what are we yeah, talking about you can you can add the questions once i finish you can add some more if you wish to okay yeah yeah so we'll begin just basic questions just about you personal questions uh tea or coffee tea a morning or a night person night cats or dogs dogs sunset or sunrise sunset okay beaches or mountains beaches okay you got to come to goa uh night uh, night or bishop bishop middle game or end game middle game uh okay uh your favorite color uh, black <laughs> favorite hero movie hero uh no i don't have any 
Really? Okay. I thought you were okay, yeah, watching just, movies. Uh, Vijay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Vijay. Um, favorite con- a foreign country, a place. Uh, okay. Uh, it Latvia was really good when I visited. It was Riga open. It was great. All right. Uh, Atul, you want to add any questions? Uh, no, no, enough. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can I can see Akash first, so I can understand. <laughs> I thought like you might be asking him something about girlfriend, but you did not ask. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so great, great. Uh, so it was a very fun stream. We learned also a lot of things here with you, Akash. So it was great pleasure to have you here. And from uh, viewers, uh, also I will say like uh, thank you very much for being here. We might. Uh, meet again uh, and learn something from you and i hope that they will also learn uh, and they must have enjoyed here and learned a lot of things from you so thank you very much thank you thank you atul and thank you nandini and you guys have been doing a wonderful job it's not easy to like uh, stream every day and be consistent with it also you may interact with the audience who are asked i know like it's a lot to take in at a short period of time So you guys are doing a great job, and yeah, keep continuing it. And thank I will you. like provide support from my side, but whenever you want. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, thank you. We, thank we would you love so to much. have you again on the stream. One of our uh, miss on our personal channel also. You can come. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> and all the all the best for your tournament. And guys, uh, don't forget to uh, participate in this Storm Chess tournament, which uh, Akash is going to conduct. Lots of prizes are there. And forty uh, thousand. Yeah, is along the total with that. Level. Yeah. Along with that, his uh, chess bread website is in the video description. Yeah. So you can visit his website right away by clicking on the link in the description. Yeah. So with this note, uh, we will take your leave uh, and good night. Uh, see you next time. Bye bye.